Allie, we're so glad that you and Josh landed at Calvary. We already love you. And we're sharing your joy in God's gift of your baby boy. Today, I want to encourage all of us that knowing all we can about God is the foundation for carrying out the duties of motherhood, grandmotherhood, aunthood, daughterhood, sisterhood. I want to read to you something written by author and conference speaker, Christina Fox. I found it to be a blessing. She has titled this, Moms Need Theology Too. What's the first thing you think of when you hear the word theology? Do you think of unpronounceable words, dusty books from centuries ago, or perhaps lengthy sermons? If you had to choose between studying theology and reading a book on practical tips for your daily life, which would you choose? For many of us moms, the mere thought of studying theology seems way beyond what our daily life can handle. We might think, at this stage in my life, I can't learn theology. My life is consumed, overwhelmed with the daily duties of motherhood. Perhaps we think that our time might be better spent reading up on ways to help our children sleep or the best nutritional choices for them or on how to keep our preschooler from throwing tantrums in the middle of the checkout lane. But the truth is we desperately need theology for all our daily duties of motherhood. We need theology for bedtime battles, for feeding worries, the grocery store, and everything in between. The word theology comes from the Greek words theos, God, and logos, word or body of knowledge. Theology is the body of knowledge about God, or simply put, the study of God. As Christians, we should desire to know all we can about God. After all, he is our creator, our sustainer, our savior. We desperately need theology for all our daily duties of motherhood. But learning theology is just the first step. We also have to apply it. And when theology intersects with our daily lives, we find that it isn't just for seminary professors, but for all of us. What we believe about God, who he is, and what he has done, and who we are in light of all that isn't just for mere study or debate. Words like imputation, justification, atonement, election, they affect the very course of our lives day in and day out. They mold who we are. When your child is sick and the doctors don't know why, so they order tests and more tests, it's your theology that tells you God is in sovereign control of all things. It tells you that God is not asleep, that he hasn't forgotten you, Psalm 121. Everything is under his control, and he is not surprised by any of your circumstances, and that he is working all things out for your good and his glory, Romans 8, 28. When you speak harshly in anger to your child, it's your theology that reminds you that Jesus came to die for those very sins. It tells you that Jesus lived a perfect life, was never unkind, always loving, and that his righteousness has been credited to you in being joined to him by faith, 2 Corinthians 5. It tells you that he is at work in you even now, leading you to repentance and refining the work that he began in you, Philippians 1, 6. When your meaning becomes merged with your role as mother, it's your theology that reminds you that your identity is found in Christ. It's not found in how successful you are as a mother or in how well behaved your child is or in how neat and clean your home is. Psalm 27 and 8. Your meaning, purpose, significance, and identity is grounded in who you are as a redeemed and adopted child of God. John 1:12. When you are dropped dead tired, your child is sick, your husband is out of town, and you don't think you can make it, it's your theology that tells you that God will provide what you need, the grace you need in the moment, 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It's your theology that reminds you that you can't do life on your own and that without Jesus, you can do nothing, John 15, 5. It tells you that your rest and hope is found in Christ alone and that you can trust him to sustain you. It's tempting as moms to think that what we need to make our lives better is a quick solution, something tangible, something we can implement to make things run smoothly. 
When the daily challenges of running a home and raising a children overwhelm us, we think that we need a fresh idea, a new technique, and then everything will be okay. So in those few moments when we have time to think and read, we reach out for those practical books and articles hoping they will change things. It's theology, knowing God, that anchors us in the chaos of motherhood. The author closes with this. While books with practical tips are useful for some things, the hope they provide can be short-lived. In truth, it's in theology and our study of God and who he is, what he's done, that gives us the real hope, the real wisdom, real peace that we need in our lives, the kind that lasts. It's theology that anchors us in the chaos of motherhood. Moms, theology isn't just for pastors, teachers, professors. It's for you too. And it's not for another stage of life. It's vital for you right here, right now, in the trenches of your daily life as mom. I'd like to close with this prayer. Ladies, <clears throat> let's hold what we know about God up to life. Let's use it in our every day. Let's trust his promises and his character, especially in the hard places, and choose to call on him to help us walk well in them. Lord, thank you for the blessing of baby boy Spofford. Communing with you will look different for Allie as she begins this new chapter of life. It will require a new kind of discipline, but that's no different than any other time our lives make a big change. This is a lifelong journey for all of us, but you have gone before her as you go before us all. As moms, grandmoms, aunts, daughters, sisters, help us desire knowing you well more than anything else. And when we aren't doing that well, remind us to cry out to you, confess it, and ask for your grace to help us long for you intimately. Thank you that when we do this, we have everything we need to walk through the challenging and the joy-filled days in a way that shows you to those in our sphere to make your kingdom greater. Allie, I wish I were there. We love you. We're praying for you both, and we can't wait to meet your sweet son.